Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest For More, back with another video. Today, we're talking about for sale by owner. So yes, I am a real estate agent, real estate broker. I have been one for 17 years now, and I am biased. But everybody's biased at something, so I might as well tell you what you think. Um, I've also been a real estate investor for about that same time. Lately, we've been flipping 20 to 30 houses a year. I own my own brokerage. Investing is what I do mostly, but I also know the agent side very well. I'm gonna tell you why I would suggest using an agent in most cases, and why I would still use an agent even if I wasn't an agent myself, if I was just an investor. So we're gonna get right into this. My site, investformore.com, has a lot more information, um, but we'll start right now. Um, the important things to know when talking about real estate agents, a lot of people think they automatically make 6% on every deal. That can be true. They can make from 3 to 3% per to 7%, but every commission is negotiable, right? There is no set commission. No one came along and said, every commission has to be 6%. That's just what you might see most often or not. Um, I can't even tell you that there's a set commission because that would be illegal for me to do as an agent. You don't even have to pay a commission. You can pay agents hourly if you really want to. Now it might be tough finding agents to do that, but there is no rule, no law that says 6% is the commission. There simply is not. They can be negotiated and they are negotiated all the time. We see it a lot. So three to 7% is a simple guideline of what you might pay, but it's all negotiable. Um, so on a $200,000 house, if your commission was 6%, it would be $12,000 that the seller would pay. So, and that's something a lot of people don't like as well. <laughs> the seller typically pays the commission when selling a house. And a lot of sellers say, oh, why, why do I have to pay the full commission? Why does the buyer pay some of the commission? Well, it gets complicated, but basically, when you're paying this 6%, I'll use this as, as an example. HUD, which is a government agency, pays 6% on their properties that they sell, 3%, to the listing agent and 3% to the buyer's agent. Now, why would the seller pay for both of these? Well, basically our system has developed over time for the seller to pay both of these because the buyers don't have tons of cash available. Right, they have to come up with their down payment, they have to come up with closing costs, pay for their loan, inspection, appraisal, and they just don't have a lot of extra money to pay their agent on top of that. So with the seller paying for their agent, it lets the seller charge a higher price for their home because there's more buyers who can afford to buy houses because they aren't paying their agent. So even though it kind of seems a little backwards, the seller pays for both the buyer and their agent, it actually raises prices for the seller. There's more buyers, it improves the housing market if your idea of improvement is more buyers and higher prices. So while it seems backwards, it actually helps them in a way. Now, we just mentioned the seller pays both of these. So while you're paying $12,000, this looks kind of crazy right now, in commissions, not all of that is going to one agent, right? You've got $12,000 and you might have 6,000 going to each agent. So a lot of people think, hey, I can still save $12,000 if I sell this house myself. Now the problem with that is 90% of buyers, this is a random number I made up, but my estimation, use an agent. Why would 90% of buyers use an agent? because they're free, <laughs> right? It doesn't cost them anything. They can use an agent, help them find a house, help them negotiate, help them go through the whole process. And because they're free, there's no reason for them not to use an agent. So if you're selling your house and you've got this $12,000 cost here, I wanna get rid of it. Well, if you say, I don't wanna pay any of that, I'm paying zero, you just eliminated 90% of the buyers out there. So that means instead of selling your house for 200,000, you might sell it for 170 because all the buyers who want to pay 200,000 are using an agent and they're not even know your house is for sale and they're not going to buy it. So, if you're going to go for sale by owner, 
you almost always have to at least pay half the commission or at least a part of it to an agent who's going to represent buyers. Now, I mentioned commissions are negotiable. Who knows? You don't have to pay 3%. You could offer 2%. You could offer 4%. All kinds of different things you could offer. If you're listing it, you don't have to pay 3%. Maybe they'll reduce it to 2% or 1.5%. Who knows? If you're buying another house, maybe they'll give you a deal. All types of things can happen. Just remember that if you're going to sell a house and do it yourself, you're probably better off at least paying half the commission. So that means you're paying $12,000 or sorry, $6,000, but you probably want your house in the MLS. So what's the MLS? The MLS is a multiple listing service. Yes, I'm talking faster than I can write. I have to concentrate so you can read it. That is where most houses are listed for sale. Real estate agents have to belong to the service. They have to pay for it and they can list your houses in that service. Other real estate agents are members of this. They see houses come up for sale and they can tell their buyers about it. Now Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia get their listings from the MLS. They have an agreement that says the MLS will send them listings. They have to pay for it. The thing is not all MLSs belong to Zillow. Not all agents or brokerages agree to have their properties sent to Zillow and those other sites either. So if you're looking on Zillow, not all properties are there. Most of them, but not all of them. So if you're selling your house as a for sale by owner, you can put it on Zillow, all those other sites, and many buyers will see it, but not all of them, especially the ones who are relying on their real estate agent to find them deals. So a lot of buyers won't be actively looking. Some will, a lot do now with today's internet age, but some will be relying on their agent to search, look through MLS, send them new listings. You can set up email searches. So new MLS listings are automatically sent to you. And if your house is not in here, you're going to eliminate a lot of buyers as well. Probably cost you much more than that $6,000 you're saving. So if you want to get on the MLS, there's something called low cost um, MLS entry, something like that. So maybe they'll charge you $300 just to put it on the MLS. Seems like a good deal. The problem with that, number one, it's not legal in every state. In Colorado, this is not legal. You cannot do it because Colorado says every real estate agent has a fiduciary responsibility to their client, they cannot simply put a property in the MLS, they have to also help their client through the whole process. So in Colorado, you cannot do this. In some states you still can, but when you do that, you're still responsible for basically everything else. So you have to consider, um, you're paying the 6,000, you're taking out these costs. Now, are you willing to do everything else it takes to sell the house? Are you good at marketing? So we're talking about, oh, forgot my N. You know, I do professional photos on every listing now. We stage every listing now. Um, we put it in MLS. We make flyers. We have the description. We put it on Zillow. Make sure, you know, that happens automatically, but Craigslist, Facebook, we put it all over the place. So marketing is huge. If you aren't going to be able to market it right, you're not going to make as much money. Now, there's the marketing. There's also calls, showings. So right, when you have a real estate agent, they'll take all the calls from other agents and buyers. They'll set up the showings with other agents and buyers. If you're doing it all yourself, you're taking all those calls. Hopefully you're answering your phone all the time and you're doing all the showings. Hopefully you're available to show the house all the time. Because a lot of times buyers will be out looking with their agents so they'll, they'll see a for sale sign or some of their house that's for sale online and say, oh, I wanna see this one too. And they wanna see it like right now. And if it's not available, they might move on. They might not ever come back to that house. So it's very important to be available all the time. You can't be like, oh yeah, we'll be able to show it from between six and eight on Thursday night. That doesn't work. So that's very important. Um, contracts, 
when you get an offer on your house. Let's say you did do the marketing, you got the pictures in, everything looks great, you get an offer, and it's 17 pages with seven addendums. Do you know how to look at that? Do you know what you're looking for? Do you know what, where the prices, the dates are, the inclusions, the exclusions, the additional provisions? Do you know how to tell if they have another house for sale that they have to sell before they can buy your house? Um, a sales contingency, as it's often called. There's so many things to review in the contract. Make sure you understand how to do that because you can lose so much money not catching all those things. Now, let's say, no, we don't need that anymore. You get a contract accepted. You've got your price is right. Now what happens? Well, the buyers will do an inspection. Do you know how to handle that? Like, I mean, remember, if you did pay another agent, those buyers have an agent representing them. You don't. And they did their inspection. They just found 37 things wrong with your house. Now, are you going to fix all of them? Are you going to give them $10,000 know, credit for all those things? Are you going to agree to do some of them, not some of them? How are you going to handle it? That's something an agent can help you with. But if you don't know what you're doing, that can cost you a lot of money. Appraisal. Ooh. Appraisals, they can cause some problems. Um, we've had a number of appraisals coming low on houses lately. We're in Colorado, our housing market is very crazy. Prices have been going up. That often can cause appraisals to come in lower than the cost of the house. So if we have a house for $200,000, that's our accepted offer, the appraiser looks at the house and says, no, I don't think it's worth that. I think it's worth 180,000. That means the seller can only base their loan on 180,000. So if they're bringing $10,000 down before, that $20,000 difference, they have to cover. They now have to bring $30,000 down if they wanna keep paying that $200,000 cost. That's a deal killer. Most people can't do that. So what are your options? Well, you could sell the house for 180,000. Who, you just lost 20 grand or you have the option of talking to the appraiser, challenging the appraiser, trying to come up with some middle ground between there or looking for a new buyer. Those are all options that can make you more money in the long run and things an agent can help you with. But if you're doing this all on your own, it can be very tricky and tough to know exactly how to do that. So the appraisal is huge. The inspection is huge. Um, loans right so most people are going to get a loan when they buy a house you need to make sure that the other buyer is pre-qualified the lender's decent everything's legit if you have an agent they can help do that they might even know the lender can tell you if there's going to be any problems beforehand if you don't you're kind of working in the dark and hoping everything goes okay those are the main things that can really cause problems where an agent can help now Maybe everything goes perfect. You don't have any problems there. Maybe you've got buyers lined up, everything's great, and you can save money. It can happen. I'm not saying every time it's better to use an agent. However, in most cases, the agent will save you more money than they cost, and the biggest reason is pricing. So even for me, sometimes pricing is difficult. Um, Every house is different. Every lot is different. The condition is different. It is not as easy as going to price a car or a vacation. It's very tricky. This is why you'll see appraisers come in $20,000 different on the same type of house in the same neighborhood in the same condition because it's a very subjective valuation. But pricing a home is extremely important and good agents will be able to help you with that tremendously and get you the highest dollar that you can. Now, What's the problem? Overprice a home. What happens when you overprice a house? Let's say that house was worth 200,000 and you list it for 230,000. Well, there might have been 10 people waiting for a house to come up in that neighborhood around 200,000. You priced it at 230,000, most of them will not even see it. They'll be like, "Oh, price too high, not even close to what I want to pay. We know it's too much." we're not even gonna look at it. Okay, so after a month, maybe two months, like, well, yeah, maybe we priced it too high. Okay, we're going down to 215. We're gonna do a big price drop. It's still not close enough. There might be some interest there, 
but most people are gonna be like, no, oh, it's still not close enough. I mean, I, this house is worth 200. How do we know they're gonna come down that much? We don't wanna waste our time. Another two months go by. Now, like, okay, we'll do this right. We'll price it at 200,000. Now the buyers see the house and say, this has been on the market for four months. What's wrong with it? Why is it sitting there? Why has it not sold? There's gotta be something wrong with it. And even though it's worth 200,000, they're like, I don't even think I wanna see it. There's gotta be something wrong with it. Now all of a sudden, the sellers are like, what's going on? I mean, we gotta lower the price. Now we're down to 190. Now you got a buyer says, okay, that's a good deal. Even though it's been on the market five months, let's go see it, let's check it out. Okay, yep, there was nothing wrong with it. Don't know what happened, but we'll pay 190. So by pricing the home too high, you just cost yourself $10,000 and who knows how long waiting for it to sell. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is overpricing a house. And an agent, if they're a good agent, should be able to help you come in with a value where it will sell quickly and for the right price. Now, underprice. What happens if you price a home too low? You lose money. <laughs> so let's say that same $200,000 house, let's say you didn't quite do your research, you didn't know what it's worth. I'm gonna price it at 180,000. Guess what? You sold it in one day. Congratulations. <laughs> Hear people say that all the time. Oh, I didn't use an agent. I sold my house in one day. Yeah, and you probably lost 20 grand, left 20 grand on the table. Now, this is actually a good case scenario because sometimes you'll see people do this. 150. It's, it's hard to, you know, you see that, say, like, no, people don't do that. It happens because I buy those houses. As an investor, we buy for sale by owner houses sometimes and people do that and they price them too low. And you just left, what, 50,000 on the table. After it costs, you're still losing 40,000 if you didn't use an agent. So yeah, that's a, that's a big difference right there. And people say, yeah, but you'll get multiple offers. So raise it back up to the price. Maybe. If you get multiple offers, maybe people come up to 170, but they usually won't come all the way up to 200 because they're still basing what they want to offer on that price, right? The people are like, hey, this house is listed for 150. You know, 170 is still a good deal, but I don't want to overpay. I don't want to pay too much because maybe there's nobody else who's offering. Or you might get somebody who just comes in the first day, makes the offer, you accept it, boom, sell it for 150. The agent can help you navigate all this, make sure you price it right, and don't make those mistakes. They also might want you to keep the house on the market for a day or two to make sure you don't get more offers that come in and have a situation where you can push the price up if needed. But this is the number one mistake and the number one reason why agents can be worth their money. So overall, if you want to do it yourself, you can, but you're probably gonna have to pay another agent. You're probably gonna have to pay fees to put it in the MLS. It's gonna be tough in states that don't allow you to do that, like Colorado. You have to do a lot more work, contracts, marketing, inspections, appraisals, all of that, um, showings, calls, pricing. You have to figure all that out in yourself. Two, if there's any problems that come up with negotiating, remember there's probably an agent helping the buyers and not helping you. Three, uh, you know, if there's a problem, <laughs> how are you gonna fix it? Uh, some of the most difficult issues in real estate come from people or transactions that don't have agents involved. They don't use the right contracts. They don't use the right wording. They don't include um, all the clauses, clauses that need to be included. And then people get sued because they didn't, they weren't clear on what needed to be done. So in the long run, if I wasn't an investor, if I wasn't an agent, I would still use an agent every time. It would save me so much time, so much hassle, and probably make me more money because they'd be pricing it right and be doing a good job. Now, final thought before we go, if you're gonna choose an agent, pick a good one. <laughs> Don't just choose the first person who comes along or your Aunt Sally who sold a house seven years ago and is still licensed but hasn't been in an office in a year. Pick someone who knows what they're doing. This is the most expensive piece of property you'll ever be selling. Pick someone who knows what they're doing, has experience, knows how to price a home, has references, has reviews, Take your time, okay? 
A lot of people say, oh, my agent was worthless. They didn't know what they're doing. Well, yes, there are worthless agents. There are worthless attorneys, worthless everything. So take your time to pick a good one. It'll be well worth it and hopefully save you some money, maybe even get you a good deal and make your real estate transactions fun and exciting and not stressful and horrible. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I um, have an article on this as well on the investformore.com website. We'll link to that below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I love to reply to people. New subscribers, welcome. Thank you for joining and we appreciate all those likes and follows. Take care, we'll be back with more soon.